subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Hurricane Ida has sparked flash flood emergency alerts in parts of New York. Tracks of the New York's subway system got flooded due to the unprecedented rain. Closer to home, just a few hours of rain in Delhi brought the city to a standstill, choking major roads and triggering a flurry of hilarious posts on social media comparing India's capital city to Venice. According to the IMD, Delhi recorded 112.1 mm rainfall in 24 hours, ending at 8.30 am on Wednesday, which is the highest single-day precipitation in September in 19 years. The fact that an increased frequency of such extreme events are a direct consequence of global warming and climate change is no longer a controversial statement. Rather, it is a scientific fact backed by many years of research from scientists around the world. In this episode, I explain the link between climate change and increased precipitation, taking you through some of the basic processes that govern our climate. I am Mohana Basu and this is Pure Science. Let me first go through the basics of how rain forms to begin with, most of which you are already likely to be aware of. To begin with, water from everywhere on Earth is constantly evaporating due to the heat of the sun. Water from lakes, rivers, oceans and even leaves of plants is constantly slipping into our atmosphere in the form of vapour. The air that contains this water vapour is warmer and thus rises. Now, as it rises, the temperature it encounters begins to drop. This is because air pressure decreases as you go higher in the atmosphere, allowing the air to spread out and become thinner and therefore cooler. Eventually, when the water rises to a height where the temperature is cool enough, known as the dew point or the point of saturation, it will start to condense into liquid form. The water vapour will not spontaneously condense into droplets. The air is also full of microscopic floating particles of dust, smoke, sea salts and other such matter. These particles allow the water to condense. As more water vapour condenses into water droplets, a visible cloud forms. In the cloud, with more water condensing onto other water droplets, the droplets continue to grow. When they get too heavy to stay suspended in the cloud, they fall to earth as rain. Now, the increased emission of greenhouse gases is making our planet warmer. What you'll hear said very often is that warm air holds more water. While this is the simplest way of understanding the link between rising temperatures and humidity, warm air does not actually hold more water. To understand this better, we have to visualize that air is not empty space. It has millions of molecules buzzing like bees colliding with each other at random. The same thing happens when water is in liquid form. However, here the bond between the molecules is more than the energy of the moving molecules, which is why they stay bound together as a liquid. But a rise in temperature increases the speed at which molecules move to the point that they escape from the liquid state and turn into vapour. As long as the temperatures remain high, the water molecules in the air are also warmer, which gives them more energy. When water molecules have more energy, they are less likely to condense. As a result, warm air which is filled with highly energized water molecules often contains more water molecules than cooler air, which is filled with water molecules that are more easily condensed and become water. For each degree of warming, the water vapour in the air goes up by about 7%. An atmosphere with more moisture can produce more intense precipitation events, which is exactly what has been observed. Now, this increase in precipitation due to warming may not always lead to an increase in total precipitation over a season 
all over the year. Some climate models project a decrease in moderate rainfall and an increase in the length of dry periods, which is offset by the increased precipitation falling during heavy rain events. So this means that if you look at the annual rainfall levels, you will perhaps not see a huge departure from the long-term average. But more water falls over a short span of time, which is what our cities are absolutely not prepared for. On the other hand, the same mechanism also increases the odds of worsening drought in many parts of the world. Warmer temperatures enhance evaporation from soil. So periods that usually experience low rainfall would become even drier than they would be in cooler conditions. Droughts can persist through a positive feedback where very dry soils and diminished plant cover can further suppress rainfall in an already dry area. In the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, that is IPC's sixth assessment report, Scientists said that the current global warming trends are likely to also lead to an increase in the annual average precipitation over India. We are now headed towards a scenario where over the next two decades, the climate will be warmer by 1.5 degrees Celsius over pre-industrial times. The report warns that India's coastline will face significant threats from rising seas, Major Indian port cities such as Chennai, Kochi, Kolkata, Mumbai, Surat and Vishakhapatnam will be exposed to coastal flooding due to the sea level rise. These coastal cities are home to 28.6 million Indians. Changing patterns of how the earth heats up also affects other weather phenomena at the global scale, disrupting the so-called atmospheric rivers. Now, atmospheric rivers are narrow corridors of concentrated moisture in the atmosphere that carry water vapor over very long distances. Such atmospheric rivers are often the direct cause of extreme rainfall events. Similarly, global warming leads to a heating up of oceans, giving rise to conditions that lead to more frequent and more catastrophic cyclones or hurricanes. Such events also lead to excess rainfall and flooding. Climate scientists had been warning of the consequence of climate change for several decades. We're now effectively in the middle of an ongoing climate crisis. And unless immediate action is taken to cut emissions, we are likely to see conditions worsen in the coming years. This is Mohana Basu, Special Correspondent at The Print. If you like our videos, you can now join the Prince YouTube membership to get special membership perks such as early access to our key reports as well as exclusive community content on the YouTube channel. You can do so through the link in the description box below.